Happy New Year. It's 2017 right here on the Silver Hair Tsunami Show. You know what? This show is outstanding. Great information you can't do without. Stick with us. We'll be right back. It's 2017, it's time to update your fashion. I'm talking about the interior fashion of your home. We've got Kim Smart here with Smart Interiors to help us through that. Kim, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, Steve. Now, did you have a wonderful Christmas? Excellent Christmas. Santa was very good to me. Oh, gotta like that. So, you know what? It's time to spruce up our, you know, our freshen up our interior home because it's just been there and sometimes it's been there for the same way for 10, 12, 15 years. Oh, yeah. How do we go about doing that? Well, you know, people ask me all the time, what can I do to freshen up my home? What are some simple things I can do? And there are three common accessories that I see all the time that people become blind to. And just by updating these items, it can breathe new life into your house for 2017. So the first one I want to talk about is picture frames. This is one people definitely become blind to. And a lot of times I go into people's homes and they have picture frames stuffed up in bookcases, all on console tables, propped up on pianos. And it's not that I have a problem with the picture frames because we definitely want to personalize our homes. It's the silver frame mixed with the brass frame, the brass frame mixed with the wood frame. It's like a bunch of mishmash stuff, right? Mm -hmm. And so to update this, what you want to do is pick the best of the best of your pictures. Maybe now pair back and add some new pictures in, but go out there, buy some new picture frames. And some key things you want to remember is you want to buy frames that are similar in color. You want to vary the heights of the frames, the thickness of the frames, and the size of the frames. And that's going to give you a nice cohesive look. You know what, I was just thinking of what you said there and I just went into a friend's house and they don't really change much. And I was looking at the pictures, the frame was actually been dusted, but the picture itself hadn't <laughs> been. <laughs> and I was like, oh my! <laughs> so what's next? Uh, another great item to update your home in 2017, and people are blind to this one too, is lampshades. Lampshades over time become kind of yellowed, mm. dented, and dusty. And good lighting is so important for a room. It can really help to elevate the look of a room. So I would suggest take a good hard look at your lampshades and then take that lamp base into a lamp store and get fit with new lampshades. And it's really gonna make the difference on how the room looks. Oh, well, I can see that. You can change the character of the room just by the lampshades. Yeah, and there's a tip for doing it too. If you have a simple lamp base, you can be more ornate with the lampshade. And if you have a very ornate base to your lamp, then you have to pick a more simple lampshade. Oh, that's good to know. Now, what's the next one? Ah. Finally, the last one, and this is a big one that people really are blind to and they just don't notice it anymore, and that is unhealthy plants or really old faux plants. These things can really bring down the look of a room, especially if you have very unhealthy plants. And then if you have ivy perched on top of your kitchen cabinets, on your armoires, on your bookcases, it's time to let that go. And if your faux plants are more than five years old, it's time to retire them because they get dated, dusty, and the arrangements themselves become dated. Mm -hmm. And there's so many people who have faux plants perched up on ledges that have been sitting there for 15, 16, 17 years. And the sun has changed them to a neon color that doesn't even happen in nature anymore. <laughs> now, here's, you know, when we go to regular plants, and, and you know what, our family is very, very, 
I want to say, guilty of destroying many plants mm -hmm. and because we, we don't have green thumbs. But um, is it good to rotate plants out as seasons go? Because there's obviously certain plants that are in season, out of season, certain colors and so on. Sure, absolutely, you can do that. But like you said, not everyone's got a green thumb. And it's good to buy plants that are indoor plants acclimated for the indoors. You can't take an outdoor palm tree and try to stick it in your home. If you want a palm tree inside your home, it needs to be grown specifically for the indoors if you really want it to last. That's some great information. Kim, I hope you have a wonderful 2017. Thanks for coming on the show, first show of the year. Thanks for having me. Yes, now, if you would like to get more information on sprucing up and freshening up your home for that new look of 2017, you wanna go to the Silver Hair Tsunami website or go to Smart Interiors. Stick with us, we'll be right back. Hey, it's 2017 and you know what? There's thousands of people here in San Diego County that are gonna be downsizing their home. They're usually in their 60s and 70s. They're looking to move to continued care retirement communities. They're moving into uh, active daily communities, 55 and older communities, assisted living communities. And you know what? It's a monumental task. How do you organize it? How do you make that move? You know what? We have Denise Levine from Outside In Organizers and Makeovers here to help us through it. Denise, welcome to the show. Thank you, Steve. Well, I want to say, how was Hanukkah? Hanukkah was fabulous. All eight days of it. Just Perfect. Loved it. Potato pancakes, potato pancakes, and some dreidels. And some dreidels spin. <laughs> Great way to spin into the new year. That's perfect. So, yeah. you know what? This big, there's a big issue that a lot of people are dealing with. They've lived in their homes for 25, 30, 40, 50, and like my folks, almost 60 years. Yeah. And now they have these big old homes and they're moving to something smaller, sometimes even half the size or a third of the size. How do you organize something like that? Yeah, that's such a good question because it's so overwhelming for people. It's kind of like you're a deer in the headlights and you go, where do I even begin? I have a lifetime full of memories represented by stuff that I own that maybe I'm not even using anymore. So the first point I'd love to share is to make sure that you don't wait until you have to downsize. That organizing is a process. So just begin decluttering a little bit at a time and that makes it less overwhelming. And I always suggest to people that they get started with the things that are easiest to let go of. Clearly, the things they don't use anymore, things that are broken. There's so many charities and organizations in the area with people in need, veterans coming back. So take a look at uh, what speaks to your heart mm -hmm. and think about where you might donate things that can be repaired if they're in fairly good condition or they're brand new and never been used and you want to donate and begin that way. So I think donating is a really good way to begin to streamline. You know, the thing about downsizing is it's all about streamlining. I think what overwhelms a lot of seniors is they don't want to get rid of everything because those are memories. Those are things mm -hmm. they're attached to. And many of them will say, well, I'm saving it for my children or my grandchildren. But I also suggest, and this is another tip, ask your children and grandchildren if they want oh, yeah. it and be prepared to hear not really because it may not be their style at this point in their lives you know what? I, I agree with that i see a lot of times where you know like my mom for example she's lived in the same home for 60 years her mom gave her things they're not things that everybody uses and when she went to my sister or my brother and says hey are you interested in this stuff I'm like no but these are things that are 80, 90, 100 years old. Mm. So with those things, what, what do people do if they don't want them? I mean, do, you know, obviously you don't want to garage sale them or give them away because it be, could be worth a lot of money. That's what what do important. people do? Yeah, that's a really important point because sometimes we don't know the true value of something. It works both ways. They want to give away something that really is of value or vice versa. They attribute it being worth more than in today's market it's really <laughs> worth. So it's really important to find out, and you can do this very easily. Um, if, if your senior isn't savvy on eBay, then have a friend or a neighbor or a grandchild go on there and put in a description of the item and see what it's actually selling for. The other option that's probably a little bit more accessible is to find a reputable appraiser, someone who really understands the type of items that you're dealing with. Um, it may be that a consignment shop where you may not get the full value, you'll only get a percentage, but at least you're selling it closer to what its current day value is. 
So I would never just toss those things. I think if you're in doubt, check it out and see what it's really worth. Oh, I was going to say, um, was it um, one of our clients uh, got dishes that were passed down. There were dishes that were made for the Titanic but never made it on. And they actually have the dishes, and they were just going to give them to St. Vincent de Paul. And they had somebody came in, and they said, oh, no, you're not. <laughs> I'll buy them from you right now. But they you know, had them appraised, and they're worth a lot of money. So there's a lot of times people have no idea what the value is. They just know they need to get rid of it, and it's one of those things they select. Right, so, right. Another thing I just want to mention, if it's okay, is sometimes sure. people have um, sets of china, for instance, a 12-piece setting, you know. These days, most people don't entertain, except for maybe the holidays, a table of 12 people. And so I also encourage people who love the china to break it up and maybe consign or sell half of the set and keep half for themselves if they have the room for it. And mm -hmm. that's really the key. When you're downsizing, you have to be realistic, not only about the amount of space you have, but what is your lifestyle going to be? The beauty of downsizing is you get to reprioritize your whole life. It's like, I don't need to dust all that silver and polish it. You know, I don't need to worry about the knickknacks everywhere. I have a small space and I want to go out and travel or play cards with my friends or join the book club. So you don't have to throw it all away. Keep the things that are important. Keep some of it, not all of it. And sometimes people are just looking for an extra set because they had it from their grandmother and they broke a few pieces. Mm -hmm. So you can actually sell partial sets of things. Oh, that's good to know. Now, yeah. You know what, we, we've got the organizing, hey, what to keep, what to sell, and then what's the, the, the next step? Okay, then it's time to get real about how much space you're moving into um, and what it costs to actually move all of these items. You know, movers generally charge by the pound. Mm -hmm. So that's another consideration. You know, is it something you would buy today? Is it something you would take when you're moving? Ask yourself those kind of reality questions. Sometimes I'll suggest that people put it away in a box, and if they don't miss it, that's kind of a hint that maybe they're not going to need it anymore. But always go ahead and get the measurements in the new space, the real measurements. Everything from cupboard dimensions. You know, I, I helped a client move to La Costa Glen and then to Glenbrook, and so she was continually downsizing. And we went and taped off the size of her sofa in the room so that she could see, can the wheelchair fit through? If we put a recliner in, how much space do we have? So access, safety, all very, very important. Take care of the big things first. So what you're saying is figure out what to keep, what to go, and then go what to the- What will fit. What will fit, and then go measure it out and get a vision for what you're going to have and how it's going to look before you move in and then right. move your stuff in. Move your stuff in and organize in a way that's accessible because we want to really promote independence. We don't want to put things way up high where people can't reach them safely. You know, seniors at a certain point, we're not going to be climbing up safely on step stools. So I always tell people, make sure when you're putting things away, put the heavy things in where you can just reach and get them instead of bending down to lift them up or reaching. Don't stack a lot of things. You know, we just when you're in a house 50, 60 years, you mm -hmm. don't think about it because that's where your stuff has always been. But now you have a clean palette and you can just start with, okay, where do I use it? That's where we're going to store it. And is it safe to get to and easy? So less is more. Denise, thank you so much. This you is great welcome. information and a great education for anybody looking to downsize. Thank you. I hope you have a wonderful 2017. You too. Well, thank thanks. you. Now, for more information, you want to go to the Silver Hair Tsunami website. And if you'd like to con contact Denise, go to OutsideInOrganizers.com. Stick with us. We'll be right back. Hey, it's 2017. We're going to start looking at some travel. Actually, we're going to be looking at some day trips. We have Maggie Espinosa from Day Trippers here to help us with those special trips that we want to see here in 2017. Maggie, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me again, Steve. I'm so glad you're here. I hope you had a wonderful Christmas. Right one. Glad, glad, glad yeah, it was. Relaxing. Now, you have a new book. Tell us about the new book. I do. Okay, so. We have an book, author here. This is Maggie, the author. Uh, the book is called On a Mission. And why I'm bringing this up is because Day Trippers has a tour that ties in with this book. What I did is a couple years ago, I walked from the San Diego mission to the Sonoma mission 800 miles. Yes? Yes. Walked. 
Okay. All right. So anyway, what I ended up doing is writing a book about it. I kind of chronicled the walk day by day and I ended up writing a book about it. Well, we had the great idea of day trippers. And what we would do is we would do a tour up to the San Juan Capistrano mission. And so we go up, we have a docent guided tour. We take the train up, which is really fun. That is fun. And then we go see the Basilica. You're on your own for lunch around the village of San Juan Capistrano. Mm -hmm. And then on the way home on the coach, everybody gets a book for free. And then I sign it and personalize it for them. And they can ask me any questions about the walk, which is a lot of fun because just the questions are really fun. Okay, so the Sonoma mission. So. Is so there a no lot mission. of wine, okay. there's a lot of wineries around there? Yes, there is. And the mission <laughs> itself is tiny. Oh. Yeah, it's in the middle of the town. Little mission, but all around is beautiful. And by the time you get there, it's the last one, you're like, I made it. Yay. <laughs> so anyway, so Day Trippers has put together this tour. It's very popular. So anyway, that's one. But we um, just had a new catalog come out. Yes. And lots of good tours in the catalog. What we like to feature is a number of things that are in the arts. So, for example, have you been to Disney Concert Hall? No, I haven't. Okay. Fabulous. Dudamal is a conductor, and he is a Venezuelan conductor. He has been on 60 Minutes. He's been on all sorts of different, like, talk shows, etc. He's fabulous. I mean, he is so into it. When he's conducting, he's bouncing up and down and da-da-da. Really, really fun tour. In the summertime, we do one in the arts, a tour. We actually do nine tours to the Laguna Padre of the Masters, which oh, wow. is really, really That's wonderful fun. as well. Really great. We And we fill all of them. Everybody loves them. So give a call. We'd love to take you up there. And then we also do stuff where we go to Descanso Gardens or we go to the Bauer Museum to see the Frida Call exhibit. We're going to Los Angeles County Museum where we're going to go see Rivera and Degas. And so you get the idea. We like to take people to places where it might just be a quick jaunt, but mm -hmm. they're not going to want to drive on their own. We get to take them there. We get to take care of everything get their tickets for them, etc. So when the spring comes about is when we start doing more of our home tours and our garden tours. And that's when we do like the Huntington Library and Gardens. Yeah. Really, really beautiful. That's nice. It's, it is really nice. And Borrego Springs. Now, they have a home and garden tour in Borrego Springs. I didn't know that. Uh, to be honest, I didn't know it either. But yes, they have a tour. It's their 19th year. I'm thinking, really? why am I not? <laughs> This is the 19th annual. Anyway, we are going up there, and we don't know yet, as of now, what the home, where the homes are, because they don't tell you until you buy all the tickets. Uh -huh. So it's a little bit of a mystery, which is really fun. But, for example, last year, one of the homes was the Copley, the family, that mm -hmm. owned the San Diego Union Tribune. Their particular house was open, and people were able to walk through it, and the gardens. And so that gives you an idea of the kind That's of places fun. that you get to go through. Yeah, really that, fun. That's great. Now, um, tell me about... Some of the day trips now, you can still go down to Mexico. Still do Mexico. We're still doing that. Very popular. You can do Puerto Nuevo, mm -hmm. or you could do the Valley de Guadalupe, which... That's the one where you get <gasps> to taste the wine. Yes, but not only that, the food is excellent. That's I what mean, I understand. I mean, the food is fabulous. And it, I think that it rivals any good restaurant here in San Diego. You know, I mean, Mexico has really stepped up its game when it comes to the culinary, mm -hmm. you know, and the wines. You know, and it's really safe. It it's, 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 it's the whole, it's safe. It's great. Very safe. Well, you guys Very take care safe. of everything. Now, is yeah. that a two-day trip? No, we have ones that are day trips where you go down to the Valley de Guadalupe or Puerto Nuevo. But mm -hmm. we do offer one where if you want to do everything... You can do both. You can go down, have lobster, then you go to the Valley of Guadalupe, spend the night, come home. So we do have a two-day one, but a lot of it is a one-day. Valley of Guadalupe is the one-day one. Okay, so tell me about this. Now, you have a Grand Canyon video. Yes. What's that all about? It is the Grand Canyon six-day tour. And oh, it's in the spring. It's in April, which you know that so area. So it's time to plan for this. Oh, yeah. yes. And you know you, that area is beautiful gonna bloom, then. Everything's the whole shot. Yeah. So um, we not only go to the Grand Canyon, we make the six days where kind of all your stops are fun. We travel on portions of Route 66. That's I have not fun. done that. I have not been on the Route 66 at all, and I would love to do that. And I think it sounds so fun. We do Sedona. So we go into Sedona and you tour around there. We do Scottsdale. And that is a very kind of a shishi nice area. Mm -hmm. We do Flagstaff. I mean, so we try to cover many different areas that you get to see on the one tour instead of just going to the destination and coming back. So it's a six-day one. I would say sign up because absolutely beautiful. You know what? 
Thank you so much for filling this out. It gives all of San Diego a whole ton of stuff to do. It does, and most of these ones, the gardens and the arts and everything, like the Nethercut Museum where Merle Norman, he has his vintage cars. These are all within one day trip, which is fabulous. You get to come home and sleep in your own bed at night. Maggie, thank you so much for You're being on welcome. the show. You're welcome. I hope you have a wonderful 2017. Thank you, I hope you do too. And I'm looking forward to taking some tours with you. Yay, good. Hey. You know what, if you'd like to get more information on day trippers and just plan one of these tours, just go to the Silver Hair Tsunami website. Stick with us, we'll be right back. Hey, you know what, again it's 2017 and just a couple weeks ago, Jan Yellen raised interest rates and you know what, she's planning to do it three more times in 2017. Now, we need to understand what that means to you when it comes to your mortgages, your credit cards, your auto, ins uh, your auto rates for refinancing or financing a new car, but right now we're gonna be talking about mortgage. We have Jonathan Droats with Synergy One Lending, and he's a vice president there. He's gonna tell us what's going on and really what it means to you and I. JJ, welcome to the show. Oh, thank you, and Happy New Year. Yeah, Amazing. and Merry Christmas. Yeah, Merry Christmas. <laughs> happy New Year, 2017. So, uh, so Steve, let's, let's look backwards just a little bit. Uh, and that 2016 at, was so fast. Yeah, it goes by quickly. It does go by fast. <laughs> Uh, so Janet Yellen uh, did what she said she was going to do in December, as anticipated increased interest mm -hmm. rates, just like she did a year prior in 2015 at the end. Um, you know, so we have a couple different dynamics that are happening right now. Is uh, one, we, uh, President-elect Trump and his policies are creating, um, you know, some some interesting dynamics with bond markets, and then oh, yeah. you have uh, the Feds uh, proposing three interest rate increases uh, in 2017. Um, so we're, we're potentially talking about three quarters of a percent higher in rate looking forward to the end of the year. Um, so what does that mean for people? I mean, in, in, the, in the mortgage world, a couple things. If you have a line of, a line of credit or a home equity line, mm -hmm. you're going to see your payment being increased from your last payment with that recent increase in December. Uh, that has gone up a quarter percent, and that will be reflective of your payment. Um, if you have uh, adjustable rate mortgages that are set to adjust every month or maybe every six months or annually, that's also tied to most likely prime rate. Mm -hmm. So you'll see that increase as well. Um, so I think the thing that for people to kind of reconsider, number one, January, do a mortgage checkup, right? We talk about this. That's so important. I mean, you do, you do checkups, financial checkup, checkups for people. Um, I hate to relay it to like going to see the doctor, but from a financial perspective, it's one of those things that's typically your biggest liability on your balance sheet. You got to get that checked up. Um, so you might as well check it out in January and get that going. Mm -hmm. um, see if you can potentially improve the situation. Um, and Steve, it may just be one of those things where it's a cash flow situation, right? Um, maybe you're an adjustable rate mortgage and that payment's adjusting. Maybe it's a line of credit that you can combine with your first or redo that line of credit. Um, or, 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 or maybe combining a bunch of different things, because uh, credit card debt, those payments are going up with prime rate adjustments, oh, yeah. right? So, you know, it's interesting. I, I hear an advertisement on the radio, and I, I don't particularly care for the advertisement, but it's, you know, your house is your bank. And I've, I've heard that. I, I don't scary. like that theory. I yeah. don't. Um, but in certain circumstances, it can make sense to combine things uh, from a tax perspective and get a better tax write-off, um, free up cash flow on a monthly basis. Um, or maybe change the term of your well, loan. Well, let, let's talk about that. We have people that their um, uh, home equity line is a credit. They're recasting. Yeah. They seven years been hit. Mm -hmm. And I just had one of my clients says, you know what? It just went up to 12. Yep. And, and he goes, I've got this extra money. I'm using it to pay it off because I don't have anything to arbitrate it, uh, arbitrage it with. And we have these people that have had a mortgage or a, a negative amortization mortgage. And there's thousands of them out there that are going to be recasting in 2017. And you and I know a number of people in that situation. Yes. Yeah. And they're gonna have a blow up. So right now is the time to be taking a look at, do I really look at that from a financial professional looking at a financial strategy? In some of, the, some of these situations, it's almost like having financial cancer. And the, you know, hey, we don't wanna have chemotherapy, we don't have radiation, we don't wanna start cutting stuff. We wanna take steps now to prevent it. That's why you do your, your mortgage yeah. checkup. Yeah to see where the issues are. And this is what we do is on a financial basis every single month with people to see where those money's falling through the cracks. And this is what could happen here. Yeah, definitely. And some people are in a great situation. And, mm -hmm. that, and it, it's nice to be told that, right? You know what? 
you're doing great. You can afford your payment. You're comfortable with your payment. Interest rate's great. Your payment's good. You're in a fixed rate. Whatever, the, whatever type of loan it is, you're in a good situation. Stick with what you got. You don't need to change anything. But it's nice to know that you've checked it out. And you should be doing, I mean, people should be doing that annually, checking that out. You're right. But I want to add in one other thing. Um, we are seeing a lot of people here, where we saw a lot of people at the end of the year, where we started looking at their mortgages. And we noticed that they had a $500,000 or $600,000 mortgage 12, 15 years ago. And now that mortgage is down to about $100,000 and they're just about to retire. Now, if they refinance now, they'll have a $400 payment, still get some write-offs, okay? And they'll have a lot more money they can go spend on retirement because when you get into retirement, it's all about the income you have to live the life you want. Right. So it makes sense to look at those things because you can live a better quality of life if you manage your finances properly. Yeah, definitely. And it's one of those things, too, where you know people sometimes are pulling to, to get the income. They're pulling from retirement assets. Mm -hmm. And maybe they don't need to pull as much, right? So you, you re you recalculate that, that biggest liability typically, and you're right. You take a $2,500 mortgage payment, you shrink it down to four or 500 bucks because their balance has shrunk that much over the last few years. Maybe they're on a 15 year mortgage and was amortized very quickly, so their payment's real high. Mm -hmm. and, and maybe it doesn't matter, you know, maybe if your house is worth a million bucks and you owe 100,000, you have a lot of equity position there. And so maybe you can lower your taxable consequence, not pull from retirement assets as much Mm -hmm. So you're not pulling as much income, you're not paying as many taxes, and you can live a, a, a life of more freedom, basically, mm -hmm. and free and a, lot, of a lot of times when you take a look at, hey, if I pay off this 100000 or 200 or 300 as opposed to refinance, how will I be able to utilize that asset? Well, you won't because it's going to be in your house. Right. So if I have that asset in cash and it's two or three hundred thousand dollars and i'm earning six percent that's twelve to eighteen thousand dollars that i can spend to go live the life i want travel do whatever i want if i refinance i could reduce my payment even further maybe four or five hundred plus my taxes and insurance but i could be in a position where i can have a better life and that's what it's all yeah. about and that's why you manage your money properly yeah and it all, it all starts with just a checkup you know at the end of the day it starts with a checkup you know, I mean, we were very fortunate with real estate in 2016 performed very well. One thing that people have to be careful of with the interest rate increases, um, long-term rates have been following that trend of, of raising mm -hmm. in, uh, the, the interest rate increase from the feds. And if you're looking to buy investment property, um, you know, from a cash flow perspective, it's one of those things you got to pay attention to as, as interest rates increase, your overall payment's going to go up and your cash flow is not going to be as great. So... Um, something to pay attention to as we start off 2017. JJ, thank you so much. Hope you have a wonderful 2017. I will. Thank you. I'm really you glad too. that you're part of our show and help educate our viewers. I just appreciate it. Oh, thanks for having me. Hey, for more information, you want to go to the Silver Hair Tsunami website. Stick with us. We'll be right back. What a great show. Information you can't do without. If you want to see it again, you want to go to the Silver Hair Tsunami website or follow us on Facebook. See you next week.